Hi creatives, you're welcome to my tutorial again today. I'm Chidi and on today's tutorial I'll be putting you through how to cut this 360 degrees flay and also how to apply the horsehair braid or crinoline to the tip. So come with me as I put you through. Here you can see the fabric that I am to use and I'll be needing my pattern paper, the pattern master, my tape, my scissors, and a few other things as you will see me use in the process of this video. This is the top that I'll be applying this flay to. Okay, this is a princess that cord top. I've already finished the upper part, the bodies of the top. So I'll put you through how to do this flay. You just need the waist measurements and the length of the flay. I've already gotten the length of my flay needed, the, the, the flay needed from the top when I was doing the basic pattern, the pattern for the top and the length that I need for this flay is six and a half and the waist of my client is 28. This waist I divided by four and that will give me seven. That is what I just marked and I'll go ahead and mark the length of the flay. I hope you understand. I'll go ahead and use my pattern master. You can use your ruler and square down this line. This represents the waist, that is 7, that is waist of 28 divided by 4, and this is the length of the flay. So I have the length there 6.5 and, and the waist 7, that is 7 times 4 will give you 28 inches. Because this very flay is 360 degrees flay, but it will have a side joining. Watch carefully and you will understand. Here is the waist divided by four and i'm going ahead to divide this seven into four parts okay seven divided by four and that is what i marked and i am also drawing slash lines on those points using my pattern master you can use your ruler so after squaring the lines i will go ahead and bring my fabric this is the fabric I used to cut a skirt earlier. I decided to change it, yes. But I'm making it for someone that has a waist of 28. Okay, so watch carefully and see how I am going to use this. I kept my fabric, fabric on fold and watch how I made sure that it is matching with the direction of the pattern of the top. That is what I just did now. I'm going ahead to cut the slash lines that I made earlier. That is what I'm doing right now. I've already kept my fabric on fold. This is still what you would do if you are using a fresh fabric. It's just the same thing. Just put it on fold, but always ensure you are observing your patterns not for your flay to have a different direction and the top a different one. That is what I just did earlier before I placed my paper to cut the flay. Okay, that is all. Just ensure you spread equally. Okay, so this front will be 180 degrees and um, by the time I cut out the back, it will give me another 180, which is 360. Watch closely to understand. Maybe in subsequent tutorial, I will also show you how to do this just once, while the flay will just have one joining, which is on the zip allowance. But this very one has a side joining. Watch how I am blending the hem of the flay, and I will go ahead and cut this out. Okay, I'm going ahead to cut it out just as you can see me do. I added allowance as I'm cutting it out because the original pattern with the pet pa has no allowance. I added half inch, I only added three quarter to the hem of the flea. Now, this is a this is 180 degrees flay that I just made. Okay, as you can see, this is what I have. I'll go ahead and cut another one for the back, which will now give me 360 because it has a side joining. I hope you understand. Don't worry, on another tutorial, I will show you how to cut this all in one. 
okay and even show you how to make 720 degrees flare and the rest of them though i have a tutorial on this i'll also link it up in the description box so that if you may want i know you may want to see it you can just go ahead and look at it so here i've placed the pattern of the front and i'm tracing it out observe that i marked the zipper allowance of about one one quarter inches there okay every other thing is exactly the same apart from that zipper allowance i added on that fold part that is where the zipper will be i will also notch it so that i won't mistake in this part to the side also notice that i observe the direction of the pattern of the fabric very very important so that it doesn't look unprofessional when you finish making your clothing okay so right here i have uh, finished cutting you know this is a skirt that i cut earlier even the lining is there now i'll be using my crinoline or horsehair braid to add to the hem i'll be taking you to the machine right now to put you through how this is done okay i i'm using one inch crinoline i'm using one inch crinoline so right here i am on the sewing machine and i'm about joining together this whole thing and showing you how to apply the horsehair braid or the crinoline okay right here you can see me with the crinoline and some pieces of the fabric because i'll be needing it just watch and you will see every bit of it i'm notching my zipper allowance for the back so that i won't be confused at any point where the side is or where the zipper allowance is yes that's the confusion that may come up if you don't notch these things okay so i've notched it and i'm going ahead to join this ensure you are facing the right part of the fabric to the right part of the fabric and the wrong side will be facing up and i'm joining with the half inch i added while i was cutting this okay i always ensure that i trim off my thread as i sew very very important stitch then you trim off your thread so that at the end of it all your stitches and everything will be just neat not threads all over okay by my side there is my bean that i throw in anything that i cut out so i finished joining the fabric i'll go ahead and join the lining pieces the same way i did for the fabric ensuring the side is joining to the side and the zipper allowance is already notched so that there won't be confusion while doing this I'm also joining the next side. I'm taking you through the whole process so that you will understand every bit of what I did in the process of joining this flea. Beautiful. So this is all I did and I will be joining the flea to the fabric. I've already notched the middle piece. I like doing this. I like joining my flea from the middle. You can also pin everything down before doing this okay you can use your pins and pin it down then you stitch but i know i can manage this that's why i am going ahead to stitch even without pinning it down okay so i've stitched this side of the flea i will go ahead go to the middle watch how i'm cutting the threads without leaving any thread out okay so I'm also going ahead to stitch the other side of the flea. I hope you understand. Stitch and stitch it all through. That is the first step. Now after stitching this, I observed an excess at that tip. You can see. I'm going ahead to cut my threads and I'm cutting the excess. And I'm notching the hem of this flea. Okay, that is what I'm doing here. Now, after notching, I'm going to turn it inside out. I like to always mark my zipper allowance so that it won't be an issue 
when I am sewing. You see how I marked it there because this crinoline is not supposed to touch, get to the zipper allowance, okay? I'll be applying the crinoline while I top stitch, okay? Watch closely to understand what I'm doing. I'm cutting out some parts of this pieces that I, I brought earlier. Now I'll be using it to finish up the tip of the crinoline. Watch closely to see what I'm doing. See how I am doing this. Watch closely. I folded that edge, placed the crinoline like this, and I'll be folding in the lower part also. It's a bit too long, so I trimmed it. And I'll be folding in, yes, the lower part. Then I'll stitch. Okay? Do this when you are doing yours also. The fabric should be you know a bit wider than the crinoline by about five over eight inch on each side on each side okay five over eight inch on each each side five over eight is just one tiny calibration more than half inch now i'm folding it over i'm folding it over again i believe you can see what i'm doing then i will stitch it down I'll stitch it down and that will be it for this crinoline tip and I will go ahead and apply it to the flea. Okay, I'm making sure that it didn't get to my zipper allowance because you won't want your zip to touch this or your stitching. Okay, just avoid the zipper allowance. Now watch how I move the allowance to the lining side and I placed my crinoline. I'll go ahead and stitch. This crinoline is right on top of the joining, joining stitch of the fabric flay and the lining flay, okay? It's just, I don't know how to say it, but it's right on that part, but it's just exceeding it a bit by about 1 over 8 inch into the fabric part this is to ensure that the lining goes in by the time it is turned just watch closely to see how i placed that crinoline okay is as i'm stitching it as i'm stitching it you know i'm top stitching this flay and at the same time applying the crinoline see the effect okay i hope you understand with this that i showed now so that the lining will be inside the lining will not come out the lining will be inside by the time you are done stitching okay so i'll go ahead and stitch and stitch till i get to the end just watch closely, you will understand what I am doing. Aside listening to what I'm saying, be very, very watchful and you will understand everything. Guys, if at this point you have not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe and don't fail to give it a thumbs up. It encourages me and that is how I know that you like what I am doing. Now I'm going to head to trim based on where the crinoline is ending and i'll finish it up just as i did for the front note that i stopped stitching uh, before i reached the end so that i will finish up this edge before i complete the remaining part i'm doing just the same thing i did at the beginning here again i don't want to shorten any process so that you will understand every bit of what i did now i stitched I felt it was so close to the tip of the crinoline, so I gave it another stitch. Going in a bit, that's what I did there. Trimmed off my thread and I'm folding in again, just as I did the first time. Watch closely to see what I'm doing. Yeah, that is all. And I will stitch it down. Okay. I'll stitch it down and cut my threads. And that is it. I'll complete the stitching. Here I'm going ahead to complete the stitching. Okay, I stopped it along the line so that I will be 
able to smoothly finish up the remaining edge. So that's that. I'll fold it out inside out. See how beautiful it's looking. See how the lining is going in. This is beautiful. See how this um, crinoline is making the hem of this fabric look. Don't worry, I will show you every bit of the step that I took. Okay, I'm going ahead to finish up this. I've ironed it. Here I have ironed it and I'm going ahead to close up every open part of the flea. I'm stitching every open part of the flea just to watch that hem, how beautiful it is looking. How highlighted and beautiful it is looking. So lovely, so nice. Now I'll go ahead and apply it to the top. I will notch the I will notch the middle of the top so that I will align this to the middle of the flea. That is just what I'm doing there. I've notched the middle. So I will start from the middle. I always like to do this so that I will you know ensure that uh, with this I will ensure that the flea is balanced, okay? So I'll go ahead and attach this flea, starting from the middle part. I'll stitch to the end and I will turn over and stitch to the other end, okay? So that is just it for this very thing. I will stitch and I will go ahead and stitch to the other side. Okay, so you can still use your pin and pin everything down and then stitch it. Just do you, okay? But I feel with this, I'm just okay. I just marked my zipper allowance so that I'll be able to attach my zipper easily because after weaving it, I won't be, I won't see the zipper notch again. So this is what I do to ensure the zipper you know, allowance line is still visible even after I have finished up the dress. So that is all guys. As you can see, I'm finishing up the remaining side of uh, the flea. So if you want, you can just pin everything down and stitch it at once. But ensure that the middle of the flea is matching with the middle of the top. This is to strike a balance, a balanced fit, okay? Ensure you do that, even if you are pinning everything before stitching. I'll go ahead and finish up the remaining side of the flea and you will see what we have. I'm marking my zipper allowance again for the same reason I stated earlier. I've finished up this. I'll go ahead and weave and iron and show you what I have on the pattern drafting bay. Okay. I'll go ahead and fix the sleeve and show you what we have. Okay. Trust you love the tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. This is the final look of this beautiful top. It's a princess that top. You can see how the hem is uh, highlighted and exaggerated. Beautiful looking. This is lovely. This is beautiful, guys. See how it is looking on the mannequin. I'm very sure you enjoyed this tutorial. Give it a like. Let me know what you think. Just feel free to react to this video. This helps me to know what you think about the video. Don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so that you will be the first to know once I upload gorgeous gorgeous tutorials that i'm always uploading on this channel thank you all for stopping by always and supporting me i love you all thanks thanks and thanks bye